When it, when it deals with God, God's a moving God. He always moves. There's always motion involved when it deals with God. When, when it deals with you coming to God, there should be energy at all times. Come on, somebody. We should not be boring. Come on now. We should be the most energetic, fun-filled, faith-filled, power-filled. Come on, somebody. Devil-stomping, Bible-carrying believers in the house that know how to put the devil in his place. Fifteen people said amen. I said, you got to know how to put the devil in his place. Come on, somebody. He's under your feet. That's why the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel? Because they know how to put the devil under their feet. And the devil is a good pedicure. what they call him? Pedicure, right? No? Now you know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go ahead and get after it, guys. Listen, this morning... Uh, and, of course, you guys know I've got plenty of messages that the Lord places in my heart on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day God puts something in, into my heart uh, for both me personally. It could be for my family. It could be for the ministry or it could be for the service. And last night, of course, I just, you know, where, where, where do you want us to go, Lord? Where do you want us to go? And I really sensed in my spirit that God's wanting us to continue on on this development and reminder of walking by faith. Okay, walking by faith and not by sight. Okay, so if we don't walk by sight, what do we walk by? Well, I had this question given to you guys. I believe it was last Sunday. I said, how does faith come? Do you guys know how faith comes? According to Romans 10, 17, I believe, it says that faith comes by hearing. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, hear me. Hear me. <laughs> uh, so if, when, when, the, when the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says... We walk by faith and not by sight. That means that we walk by what we hear. So I'm, I'm going to tell you this. You will only have enough faith according to what you hear. So if all you hear is negativity in your life, that's what you're going to have faith for. That's why bad things come easily, because that's all you hear, so you have faith for negative things, and negative things show up in your life. Come on. Don't look around. Just keep looking straight. But if you hear the word of God, and you place that into your system, come on, somebody, and you start to believe, now you walk by faith in the power of God. And you start doing things like moving mountains, come on, like walking on water, come on, somebody, like paying off debt, come on, somebody, praise God, like healing the sick, come on, man, Pr praying for people and leading them to Jesus. We got any believers in this house? And so this morning, the title of the message is this, we got Brother Hector back there, hopefully he can pull, the, here we go, the creative power of your words, really it's not... It's not the creative power of your words. It's the creative power of words. The creative power of words, all right? Uh, now, because I, I don't want to say your words, because your words may not be the powerful words we need to be speaking. Unless it is what you're doing, like what Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. Are y'all with me this morning? Because this is how you're going to produce that faith working power. That's how you're going to produce this, guys. And as believers, listen, the more the world gets darker and darker after the world, not, not us, but the more that the world gets darker and darker, the more the world needs light. And guess who carries the light? We do. Who, how many, okay, somebody said Jesus. Who said Jesus? All right, somebody said Jesus. That's fine. Jesus is the light of the world. But then Jesus reflected it over to you and said, and you are the light of the world. Why is that? Because he lives on the inside of you. And wherever Jesus goes, or wherever you go, Jesus goes. Come on, somebody. And Jesus is the light of the world. God, listen to me. Listen to me. We've got to stop. This has got to come to a stop. We've got to stop looking at Jesus as some religious figure that lives in heaven somewhere, and he really can't hear me unless, you know, he gave you the authority through the name of Jesus at the beckon call that when you say that name, things begin to change. The creative power of words. Now, I want you to write this down. This is not going to be back there in scripture form. I just want you guys to write this down. I want you to write down John chapter 12, 49 through 50 in your notes, if you're taking notes. Because it says that having faith in God means that you're going to speak what God says. 
If you're going to have faith in God, it means that you're going to speak or at least believe what he says. That's the best kind of faith to have right there. Uh, write down John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus himself is known as the word of God. I'm talking about words here. The creative power of words. John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus himself is known as the word of God. Uh, in Matthew 12, 37, write that down in your notes. It says that words will either justify you or condemn you. That's what words will do. All right. Words will either justify you or condemn you. That's in Matthew 12, 37. In Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says that words can move mountains. In Proverbs 18, 21, write that down. It says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So both are in the power of the tongue. Now, I remember I had, let me just kind of stop right there with that. I had somebody say, hey, we should always just speak life. You should always speak life. And, you know, people always, they use that. And I, and I, and I said to them, I said, no, you, you need to learn how to speak death too. Because not everything that comes, like, for instance, when somebody gets cancer, you don't want to speak life to cancer. You want to speak death to it. You want to command that cancer to dry up from the root and die. Come on, somebody. Negative thoughts, pornographic thoughts, evil thoughts, crazy thoughts, stabbing somebody in the chest thoughts. You want to kill those thoughts and kill them from the root. So the power of life, which we all should be speaking, and the power of death that you also should be speaking against things that shouldn't be in your system of operations is in the power of your tongue. Come on, somebody. You don't want that to happen? Well, speak against it. Come on. <laughs> All right. In John 6, 63, write that down. It says that words are spirits and they are life. Words are spirit and they are life. Every word you say, every word you speak carries a certain weight. And the thing about that is that you can't take back what you said. If you said it, you said it. That's it. It went out there. You can't just. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Now you can ask for forgiveness because that's what probably you're going to have to do. But you can't take back what you said. They already went out of your mouth and, and they were said. Now you're going to have to clean up the mess or continue with the blessing, however you use that. All right. So your words are spirit and life. In Hebrews 11.3, the Bible says that the words, there was words uh, by, by how the worlds were framed. The worlds were framed by the word of God. That's Hebrews 11.3. Ephesians 4.29 says that words are meant to minister grace to the hearer. That's what words, for, what words are for. Now, here's the last one that I want to mention, and this is where we're going to kind of launch off and start off this morning. I just wanted to give you guys a synopsis of how throughout the entire Bible, words mean something. Okay, guys? Come on, somebody. Um, when was it? Was that, was that, think, was that... Let me see. I think it was. Uh, I think it was last Sunday. I was teaching on uh, the the uh, the value of your soul. Was that Sunday or Wednesday? I can't remember when that was. I think it was. Was it Wednesday? Wednesday. The value of your soul. And I was talking about how in your soul is made up of your mind, will, and emotions. And I was talking about how like every thought that crosses your mind, you should not take into consideration. Not every thought that crosses your mind is meant for you to speak or say. You've got to learn how to have self-control. That's the fruit of the Spirit. You've got, you got to learn to have self-control in what you say. You can't just say what you want to say. Because sometimes that flesh is sneaky. You know what I'm saying? The flesh, the unrenewed portion of you, the, the, the one that's hostile against God, will say certain things that if you, don't, if you don't put it up against the Word of God, you'll say something that you probably are going to regret saying. Amen. Amen. Now, you are not responsible for what anybody else says about you or to you. You're not responsible for what they say. You're only responsible for what you say. We will, the Bible says well, we will give account to every idle word we speak. Come on, amen. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help somebody out here because probably some of us in here this week said something we shouldn't have said, including me. Come on. Right? Come on. Wait. I know we ain't all perfect up in here, right, right? We, we've all said, okay, so here's the truth. We've got to learn that as we keep walking by faith, 
to know what to say. You got to think about what you're saying. Is this going to be hurtful? And not only is it going to be hurtful to somebody else, but every word the Bible says that he who loves it will eat the fruit thereof. That means that every word you speak eventually boomerangs. <laughs> come on. It'll go and hit somebody, but that thing is going to come right back and hit you back. It's going to come back to the owner of them words. Come on now. That's why you want to make sure that every word you speak is a blessing. That it ministers grace to every hearer. Why? Because that seed you sow is eventually going to create a harvest back into your own life. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? I told you we're going to talk about faith today. All right. So let's get this. All right. So here's the last one. Here's the last one I want to tell you about words, and then we'll get, get right into this thing. Genesis 1, 1 through 31. Write that down in your notes. Genesis 1, verse 1 through 31. Words were initially used. To create, not to communicate. If you go into Genesis chapter 1, I'll go 1 through 31, you'll see how many times it, the, the, the word said, God said, and there was. He was creating. Come on. So this is where I want to launch you guys off. The creative power of words. Now, if your words are his words, then we can say, yes, power of your words. But if your words are not his words, because the next line, and I didn't put it in the title, it says the creative power of words that God spoke. Ooh, praise God. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, be imitators of God. Follow him and his example. Okay? So the creative power of words. Words were initially used to create, not communicate. Now, watch this, guys. I'm going to put this. I hope that y'all guys will receive this this morning. But if you don't like what you see right now in whatever state, whatever, doesn't matter what it is, in your family, in your finances, in your job, in yourself, whatever it may be, start evaluating what you're saying about the circumstance. Okay? Start evaluating what you're saying about it. it if all you're saying is what you see unproductively, and you're saying that, that's why it's staying unproductively. Are, are you with me? If you find yourself complaining, come on, nagging, come on, somebody, being negative about everything, you can't ever see it glass half full. You always got to see a glass half empty. You're, you're one of those people that just are realist, like, I, this is what it is, and this is how I see it. That's not walking by faith. You don't need faith to see it for what it is. You don't. It's already created for you. If the glass is half empty, it's already created for you. You don't need faith. It's right there. But if you want to see that glass half full, you've got to change something. You've got to change the way you speak. You've got to change the way you see it. If, you're chill, if, you're, if your husband is not doing what he's called to do, you can change that, wife. No, no amens. Nobody want to get in trouble when they got home. All right. Husbands, if your wife, <laughs> come on, is acting up. Amen. I'll pray for you, bro, after sir, because I know you can. <laughs> If your, wife, if your wife is acting up, guys, and she, there's something that's not going on, you don't have to complain to her. You don't have to pick it. You don't have to pick at her all the time. Well, you never do it right. Y por qué no eres como aquella? Don't ever say that. Yeah, you'll really be, you're out. But here's what I'm saying. Start to speak to her in how you want her to walk in love. Honey, you're the best cook I've, uh, anybody's ever. That's, that's the best menu anybody's ever made. Praise the Lord. That's the best yellow chicken I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> Babe, you're beautiful. You're, you're, yeah, some crazy. See, you always got to say, you've got to say. You've got to change the way you see things. If your children are acting up, change that. Keep telling them, create. The words, your words are spirit and life. They have the creative ability to change things, guys. And God made it to be like that. That's why the enemy, then the Bible tells you by your words you will be ensnared. That means you'll be, you'll be in a trap if you don't watch what you say. 
Much rather, you, you think about what you're going to say so that it, it can create something better in other people's lives and in your lives. Come on. See things better, guys. And when you see things better, you can say things better. And when you say things better, you can have things better. Don't say it for what it is. Say it for what it can be. See it as a change in life. And, and even if you have to tell yourself, because your wife's always telling you, you're good for nothing, no violence, but nah, y esto, lo otro, will change it. When you look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, Bert? You're a better man. You can do better. You're going to do better. Now, here's the deal. It may, something may not change right there on the spot, but because you use your faith, come on, somebody, because you use the words that have spirit and life, praise God, because you use words that can move mountains, you will see something shifting. Just give it some time. Just give it some time. You will see something shift and change in whatever it is that you're in right now. Come on, somebody. You got to believe it. I mean, and listen to me, guys. You don't have to receive everything people say about you. Well, I don't like the way you look. Praise God. I'm going to change that. Amen. I, 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 don't, I, you know, I don't have to receive that. I mean, you don't have to be ugly about it either. You just say, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't receive that. Say, say that to yourself. I'm a beautiful man. Come on, man. Praise God. I remember one time I, I told my wife, I said, babe, I don't know, I don't know what you've seen in me. Like, okay, now I'm not trying, none of y'all agree with that, all right? Yeah. Now I'm just saying, I was like, babe, I don't see what you, you're such a beautiful young lady. I'm this dark, old, crazy looking man, bald headed, all crazy and weird. How'd you like? She goes, babe, you're beautiful to me. I said, really? For real? She goes, yeah, you're, you're like the, there ain't nobody else that can top you in my life. I'm like, praise God. Ain't that awesome? But I look at myself, I'm like, man, I, but then I had, I had to start going by what she said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a beautiful man. I'm a beautiful man. Praise God. Sometimes beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what she sees. She sees me beautiful. None of y'all probably do. Y'all like, nombre está ta ta ma. Anyway, so just... But just, I'm going with what she says. She said, I'm a beautiful man. I connected my faith to that. I came into agreement with that. Come on, somebody. And now, hey, I'm a beautiful man. Hallelujah. No matter what anybody else, come on, somebody, thinks about it. <laughs> okay? All right? Praise God. Okay? Y'all ain't mad at me or nothing, right? Everybody good? Okay, praise God. All right, here we go. Let's get into this. The creative power of your words. Now, I'm going to take you guys into Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. Very interesting story here, guys. Very powerful, too. Incredible. I'm going to show you how God told Ezekiel to do something concerning his words. Are y'all ready for this? Starting in verse 1, Ezekiel 37, starting in verse 1, NIV translation. That's where I'm going to read it out from. We're going to start here. You know my wife did that. That's nice, pretty uh, feminine colors right there. Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> It says here, the hand of the Lord was on me. This is Ezekiel, the prophet, speaking this. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. Now, I want you, let me, let me just stop there real quick. I want you guys to know something. God is not afraid to put you in a place where it seems like nothing's there. Let me tell you what that's called. It's called giving you a clean slate. He's going to give you, he's going to take you to a place where there is absolutely nothing there. Some of y'all may be there right now. No hay nada, no miro nada. Perfect. That means God's going to use you to do something and create something. Come on, somebody. That's not a bad place to be. As a matter of fact, when Jesus, after he uh, got baptized and he was fasting for 40 days, um, he got taken by the Spirit into the wilderness where it was, there was nothing there. So if you're there now, you're in a good place, guys. That means God is about to do something in your life. Someone say amen to that. Like you know God's up to something. Huh? Yeah, he's going to turn it around. Okay, good. I thought you were telling me to turn it. But don't be telling me. Don't be good. I'm preaching here. Pastor. Pastor, I'm preaching. Okay, so watch this. Now, watch what was in the valley, guys. He sent me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. 
Huesos, not even meat, nada. Like, what am I going to do with this? Some people like to eat neck bones, right? Anybody? No? Brother Trey? Brother Trey, I like them neck bones. Okay, I got it, I got it. All right. It says here that he was in the middle of the valley and it was full of bones. Next verse says, and then he led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. Next verse. Oh, are you going with me, bro? Are you going with me back there? I already read, I already read a line. There we go. They were very dry. All right, next line, please. Brother Hector's in training back there. Come on, let's give Brother Hector a big old round of applause back there. Hallelujah. He's training. He, he's listening to my words. That's why he's like, okay, so. It says this, then he asked me, what's this? So there was a, what was there? Where, where would the Spirit of the Lord lead him to? To where? To the valley, right? Come on, someone say valley. And there was what there? Bones, right? And not only just some bones, many bones. All right? Someone say many bones. It says, and he asked me, son of man, can those bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then God said to me, Ezekiel, he said to you, prophesy to these bones and say to them. Ooh, Jesus. Look, guys, right now, some of y'all in this room, you're in that valley of bones. And you're like, what am I going to do with this? You're kind of struggling with it. Like, God, really, what am I going to do with this? My bank account is dry. My marriage is dry. My relationship is dry. My job is dry. I feel like I'm in the, I feel like I'm just spinning my wheels. Like, really? Where am I going? Where am I going with this? Come on. Anybody can relate in this room? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? I don't know. I don't know. There's nothing I can do with this dry bones yet. God tells Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. I want you to say something. I want you to use words. I want you to use creative words because the words that I'm going to give you to say are spirit and life. Guys, it's time for you guys to really start walking by faith. And start speaking supernaturally. Don't, don't say things for what they are. Say things that are about to change your life. You have the words on the inside of you that have creative power. Come on, somebody say, I have the words on the inside of me that have Creative power. How many of y'all believe that? Come on. Come on. Right now, some of y'all are thinking, my gosh, I need to start saying something different about what I've been saying about things. You know what I'm saying? You got, I mean, I, I, I got to say something different now, man. Uh-uh. I'm, like, I'm like Ezekiel right now in the valley of dry bones. And if God did it for Ezekiel, he can do it for? Same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The same God, the same God that spoke to Ezekiel, the same God that spoke to Moses, the same God that spoke to Jeremiah, the same God that spoke to Malachi, the same God that spoke to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the same one will speak to you today. Amen. Come on, don't say amen in this house. Like you believe that you, you serve a supernatural God who can change things around a snap of a finger. Or and a snap of your mouth saying something. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can we give God a praise? Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's what I was doing out there to that air unit. I know if y'all know the reason why our kids are in here this morning is because our air unit back there supposedly stopped working. Or it didn't stop working. It actually looked like it didn't have enough Freon in it. Okay? All right? 
Uh, Brother Fabian, you hear me? No, I'm just kidding. All right, so, <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Uh, so, I went out there. I said, come on, brother, let's go. Let's go out there, go check it out. Sure enough, it was doing this thing. And I said, hey, in the name of Jesus, you're going to start working. So then we did that. Brother Ruben looks at me all crazy. I said, all right, cool. Let's go. Let's walk inside. Turn it off. And then I went out there with Brother William. Because Brother William asked, asked me a whole bunch of questions. Like, I'm like, bro, come on, go talk to Brother Ruben. He'll tell you all about it. And then I said, all right, let's go check it out. So then Brother William and I went out there. And I, I said it again. And I even kind of hit it on the side. Anybody like to do that? Like, if it doesn't work, you got to give it a little spanking. You know what I'm saying? I, I said, bow, bow, bow. Brother Ruben told me he had already done that, too. I, I, said, I guess that's what we do, right? We just kind of give him a little, hey, you better move. All right. So then we went out to Brother William. And I, told, I said, Brother William, check that out. I said, in the name of Jesus, whatever is not working is going to start working. Now, watch this, guys. I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to see that it's going to start working. I don't. I already said it. So here's, here's, here's how it works. You may not see it immediately right there start working, but because you said it, something is already going to work on it. Okay? Who knows? By the time service is over, it'll just kick on all of a sudden. Like, well, what happened? Mm -hmm. No, I know what happened. We spoke over that thing. And even if that thing doesn't start up right there and then, God's already putting things together. He sends Fabian, who works at the air unit place. Come on, somebody. And he hears the word of the Lord. <laughs> he hears the word of the Lord. All right, and then he's like, man, I think when I go to work tomorrow, I'm going to tell my boss something. Here's the Lord. Let's see what we can do. It doesn't, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that God already puts things in motion for you. See, guys? You see what I'm saying? Like, when you start to see or when you start to say what you can see perspectively, the change is the moment you say it, Things already go to work on your behalf. Come on, somebody. Come on. You may not see immediate results right there, but you will see something. Amen. Someone say amen to that. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Here we go. It says, uh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. Whew. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Praise God. So I prophesied as I was commanded. I'm telling you guys right now, God has already commanded you to start speaking what he said. Start speaking what he said over your circumstance. Start speaking what he said over your situation. Start speaking what you said over your marriage, over your life, over your children, over your church, over your pastor. Come on. Over everything that you have, start speaking to it. Do you need a job? Start declaring, thank you, God, for the job I'm about to get. Even better say, thank you, God, for the job I already have. Come on, pull it in close to you. Pues no tienes trabajo. Where are you working? I don't receive that. In the name of Jesus, I already spoke it. Thank you, God, for the job I have that makes $35 an hour. Well, you work at McDonald's. How can you make $35 an hour? That's not my business. I already said it. And I believe it by faith. All of a sudden, you get promoted to the corporate office of McDonald's. And they pay you $35 an hour to sit behind a desk, make sure all the nuggets go through Come on, you ain't even got to touch a nugget. But because you prophesied over them dry bones, it started growing tendons. It started coming together. Skin started coming. Breath started coming. Come on, somebody. It started to come alive, praise God, because you prophesied, because you said something, because you spoke to those dry bones. You didn't let those dry bones speak to you. You spoke to them. Somebody in this house is going to get delivered this morning. Because you have a God, like I said, that said that to Ezekiel, and he's going to say it to you. He's no respecter of persons. Come on. We got to start shifting and changing to what we say. Stop saying your husband ain't no good. Start saying your husband is the best. He's high quality. Ain't nobody like him. 
He's one of a kind. And he's all mine, mine, mine. <laughs> you don't belong to nobody else. You ain't going to go be chasing out after anybody else. Come on. You got to tell him. I mean, nicely. No, honey. Your eyes ain't for anybody else. Say it. See, you done said it. Whatever it is that you say, your eyes ain't for nobody else, mijo. Your eyes only for me. And next time you watch, you go to Walmart, you, you, see, you see the, the tights pass by, he's going to be like, ni, ni puede mirar para allá, está todo, Eyes stuck glued, hina. just looking at you. And you're just like, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You ain't going to be doing all that. You got to see, but if you keep telling them, watch this, if you keep telling them, man, you're worthless. Well, guess what? That just created that. And guess what? He's going to walk in that thing, man, in worthlessness. And who for for all? It may even walk in depression and anxiety because he's tripping out because you told him all that. And everything you say does make a difference because he really loves you. And everything that you say is like, (laughs) right? You know, I thought, oh, my Lord. Con ojo y todo. Be like, I have to rub an egg on that, brother. No, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Anyways, all right, so this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will, I will make breath into you and will, uh, uh, you will come to life, okay? I think we already talked about. Um, then you will know that I am the Lord. The next line, bro. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I don't have the verses right here broken down, so you're going to have to just flow with me here. So our, we already read that part. He, he's going to attach sentence that I am the Lord. So watch this. So I prophesied. As I was commanded. And as I was prophesying. Oh my gosh. As you were speaking. As you were believing the words that were coming out of your mouth, Jackie Chan. As you were prophesying, there was a noise. A rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Next line. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. See, guys, listen to me. You ain't got to see it come to life yet. All you got to do is say something, and you'll see the little details, the intricacy of things that need to be put together, they will start being put together. But you just wait. The breath of life will eventually come into whatever it is that you're saying. Come on, change it. You got to have self-control and self-discipline over the words that you say. I know you want to say they're good for nothing. I know you want to say you guys got to, I know you want to tell them. I know you want to speak your mind. I know you want to just let them have it, but don't. Start using the creative power of your words. Come on. To begin to start changing and shifting something in your life. It takes work. It takes effort. It does. Because it's easy just to say whatever's on your mind and whatever's on your heart, whatever's on your emotions. It's real easy to do that. Ain't nothing hard about it, and you don't even need faith. That's not walking by faith. That's just walking by the flesh, and that's just walking by just sight and all this other mess. But if you want to see the power of God working in your life, I'm telling you guys, start, begin to start thinking about what you're saying and how to say it. And start believing that God has the power through you on the inside of you to be able to shift and ch- change everything. Because you have creative power in your words. So I prophesied, commanded, there was a rattling sound. The bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it. Ooh, yeah. Did y'all hear that? God said this to Ezekiel. God said, you say it. He didn't say, I'll do it. Right? Are you reading the same word here I'm reading? Look, then he said to me, You prophesy to the breath. You prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live. Oh, you know, some people got this idea, Sister Margarita, that 
Well, I'm waiting on God, right? I always hear people say that all the time. To me, that's a religious statement, to be honest with you. Well, I'm waiting on God. Well, what are you doing while you're waiting on God? Are you doing something? Because he's waiting on you. I already told you what to do. Now take the step. Come on, Peter. Peter, hey, man, if that's you, bid me to walk on the water. Jesus said, come. Peter could have just sat in that boat. Well, I'm waiting on you, Lord. He didn't. Peter stepped out. And the moment he stepped out, that water held him up. Some of you guys right now, you're just on the verge. You're, you're wanting to step out, but you're scared because you haven't, you're waiting on something. But I'm going to tell you, and I said this, I think a couple of Sundays ago, I said, some of us in here, we got to start taking risks. We got to start stepping out, start doing things, and start believing that God will back you up. Come on. Here's something risky. Forgive your husband. How about that? Start there. Forgive your wife. Let all that mess go. Whatever they did, it's in the past. The only person that brings up the past is the devil. And when you start bringing that kind of stuff up, guys, you're acting like the devil. Come on. I ain't talking to anybody in this room, am I? Did I just talk to these lights? Mira luz. Es lo, es, la, la cosa es que... I'm wanting to get you guys out of a place where you may be in a rut, but it's time for you to get out. God knows how to get you up and out, but here he's telling you to say something, guys. You got to prophesy. You got to prophesy. You got to say something to these dry bones. You got to say something to what looks lifeless. You got to say something to it looks like it's not moving, it's not nothing, but all of a sudden you're going to hear a noise. The rattling of bones. It's time for you to start hearing the rattling of bones and stop listening to the murmuring. Stop listening to the haters. Stop listening to the people that are talking about you that they don't believe that you can make it. They're thinking you're useless. You're nothing. You're worthless. No, 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 no. Stop listening to that and start hearing the rattling of some bones. Coming together, bone to bone. Come on. Flesh on the bones. Skin on the bones. Come on. And then here comes the breath. Are you ready? Because you're going to speak to it. Breathe, bones. Breathe. Yeah. Woo. It said, this is what the sovereign Lord come. Breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Watch this, guys. You start speaking to things, not only is one thing going to come to life, everything's going to come to life. You're not just going to have one thing that's looking good. You're going to have everything. It's going to look like a whole army of good things that just happened. Things that you didn't even know that you could even ask or think because God is able to do that. He's able to do more than what you can ask or think. But can you at least say something? And God will create what look like one bone and one body into an army. Abundance. Come on, somebody. Abundance. Can somebody say abundance in this room? Abundant marriage, abundant children, abundant job, abundant finances, abundant love of God, abundant peace, abundant joy. Come on, somebody. Abundant. Oof. Whew, praise God. Oh, man. So I prophesied a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel or these bones are the people of Family Faith Center Snyder. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, you ready? Pick up, lift up two hands to heaven this morning. Come on, I'm fixing to prophesy over you. Exactly what God just said. Are y'all ready? People, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, 
I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. I have done it, declares the Lord. Now I'm going to tell you guys, as the pastor of this church and the pastor of your lives, I'm going to tell you this as God told Ezekiel. Prophesy and speak to those dry bones. What are the dry bones in your life right now? You are in the valley, but what are the dry bones? Begin to start speaking life into them. Begin to start speaking that things are about to get better. Begin to start speaking over your soul. Begin to start speaking over everything that you have. Begin to start seeing God putting back the bones and the skin and the tendons and the breath. Come on, and the spirit. Begin to start seeing that it's coming to life, praise God. You're not going to lose out. You're not going to die out there in that valley. You're in that valley with a purpose and a reason for you to prophesy over whatever needs to be changed. You have the breath in your lungs to speak it. Begin to start shifting and changing things around by the words you use. Their creative power. How many of y'all by sign of hands starting today you're going to commit to evaluating your words and start speaking the life side of things. Come on, by sign of hands. How many of y'all gonna you gonna commit to that this morning? Say this with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every negative confession I've made over my life and the life of others. I will no longer speak that way. Every word that comes out of my mouth is spirit and life and I will minister grace to every hearer and I do have the ability to not only communicate with my words but to create just as you did in the book of Genesis I am made in your image and I am made in your likeness so not only do I look like you I can speak like you and I prophesy over every dry bone in the valley I'm in and command it to come to life. Flesh, grow, skin, grow, breath, grow, come to life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a praise in this house. Like we're believing that God's about to change things in your life. Hallelujah.